So, uh, I've been going through your website, uh, the Sanskrit dot uh, Sanskrit dot i and I mean, yeah. it's a it's a it's a treasure house of learning learning system. So there are songs. Uh, I, I I myself heard a couple of songs, and the reason I ask you this question is because among us, all of us who are who are part of this team, we are all enthusiasts of some you know, one way or the other. And as you might know, we have we have worked on a game. And what I liked about this, I think two things I want to ask you about. One is how did you figure out that songs are a means to teach? Right. And secondly, when you shared the mantra, mm. it was written in different colors, and that left me wondering why do you Why is it so colorful? Right. Okay. Thank you for asking those questions. So, uh, first of all, um, so songs. What well, the power of songs is this: that if you have learned a song in childhood, uh, you will never forget that. You, people will have taught you many, many things. Many words have been spoken, but you won't remember those. But you will remember a song to the very end of your life. So, songs are very powerful. They go right into your heart, and they stay there for the rest of your life. So, if you need uh, to learn something, you can sing it into your heart. And once you've sung it into your heart, you will never forget. It. So that's a, a, a really a powerful tool. This was uh, really thought of by Narendra Ji in Pondicherry, who put this whole course together. So he has about 150 to 200 songs ready. Some of them to teach Sanskrit grammar, some of them to just uh, make children laugh and enjoy themselves, and some of them to learn the uh, the Aksharani, and uh, and then other ones so for um, devotional songs, obviously, because uh, the Sanskrit language is very much a language of devotion, and it connects you. This whole uh, discovery of who you really are. Is in the field of bhakti. So uh, again, bhakti and and song go together. So that's. I could give you some uh, display some examples if you would like. Uh, Nina, would you like that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll just share the screen and and you can have a look at that. So um, I'm going to just share here. And take a moment. So <clears throat> now the devotional aspect of the for the moment. Well, actually, no. I'll start with the devotional aspect. So uh, the if we take something like this. So let's see. So you can see from that that uh, that is honoring all the elements and saying, you know, we respect them. We are, you know, we are grateful for all these, and we we take their blessings. So that is a, a very children love this. They sing this with full vigor because they connect with the essence of that. It's really about uh, respecting the the planet. And all the things that are given to us, which we do nothing for, we were just given them by uh, the powers that be. So we're very grateful. So this is a way to have an eco-friendly world, a world that won't overheat and all those things, because we begin to respect these elements. So it's a very practical thing as well as very devotional. And then let's take something like this, where uh, we actually made a video of this on YouTube. Uh, the idea that Vasudhaiva uh, Kutumbakam is, of course, uh, another very important message that we are all family. So, how can I be uh, afraid of you or feel different from you when I see you as your, uh, my brothers and sisters? So, that's a very important message. And then the whole idea that uh, we get uh, from wisdom, we get prosperity and freedom. So, begin with. You know, look after the divine, and the material will look after itself. So this is the language that does it. And then, so it's about prosperity and freedom for the world. And Sanatana Dharma really 
it has that view in mind. The purpose of Sanatana Dharma is that, that everyone will be prosperous and free. So uh, these are the sort of ten tenets of, of Sanatana Dharma. So, you know, it's an amazing because there is no organization, no founder, no building, no initiation. You simply practice these things. Anyone in the, in, anyone in the world can do this. So, Dhriti, Kshama, Dhamma, Asteya, Shaucha, Indriya, Nigraha, Dhi, Vidya, Satya, and Akroda. All these powers are, are, can be practiced and developed. Every human being on the planet knows this is good for them. So, that again is from the Sanskrit literature, literature the, the Manu Smriti. Uh, these sort of statements from the Rig Veda, let noble thoughts come to us from everywhere. Like, you know, Ano o bhadra karatavo yantu vishvataha. Isn't it beautiful? That's, that's the sentiments that are for everyone. Uh, for example, the practical aspect keep your eye on the ball. Your concern is with action alone, never with results. You see, it's really telling you keep your eye on the ball. So, this is just a Bhagavad Gita verse. Um, there's another one. Uh, I use pictures because children really connect with them. And then here you can see, you know, the leaders of our society, we should set a good example. Whatever the greatest man does is also done by others. Whatever standard he set is what other people follow. So uh, we love to follow a good example. And then, for example, women. Just uh, in our society, we need to really begin to respect women more. I think that is one of the things we are also falling down on that in Ireland. And uh, we need to, uh, you know, women are afraid to be outside in the dark in Ireland, for example, which is not right. You know, they, they should feel free to go home, whether it's day or night, etc. So these are things that if women are respected, the whole society will flourish women are not respected, society cannot flourish. So these are important principles. Uh, then these simple things, again, children will, after we've learned this first, they will come with you with a little leaf and offer that to you or a flower just to see. And that always brings a beautiful smile on everybody's face when they do this. So these are the, this is the wisdom of uh, Sanskrit. And uh, for example, speech, that is so again how do we should we speak who are great orators you know and speech shouldn't cause distress it should be truthful it should be loving beneficial and we need to practice uh, recitation of mantras and so on in order to have proper speech so all this wisdom is available through the sanskrit literature so our well-being depends on this the whole world's well-being depends on how we speak so then, uh, this is another aspect of well-being. If you have learned to master your mind, it will be your friend. If you have not learned to master your mind, it won't be your friend, it will be your enemy. So, such an important statement, again from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so we learn these verses off by heart and we sing them because then we'll remember them. So, how we should eat, how, you know, how much, when, all these things are, all these uh, aspects are given in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, then, of course, all be happy, this very famous uh, saying, you know, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashti Dhrukka Bhavet. So, uh, if everybody really kept that in their heart, the whole world would become a beautiful place to live in. And uh, so these are uh, aspects of well-being we cannot do without, really. And uh, this is a teaching for uh, globally, for the whole world. Everybody needs to hear this. Well, I won't do that now. But uh, it, so that gives you some flavor of how important this literature is. And then how we teach it and why we teach it. So just the importance of this language. And if you just look at the Varnamala, we spoke about that earlier, and then take the English alphabet, it's really, you know, the difference between reliability and no reliability. 
So if you look at this, it's structured, it's got a complete system, it's scientific. Uh, everything is, you know, what effort do you make? Where do you put your tongue? What mouth position do you use? It's all very clear. Whereas uh, you can't say that about any other alphabet, really. So we, there's a song, of course, from that end that I I'll just play and so on and then look at this alphabet it's really not comparable it feels more like a rubble of stones yeah compared to that beautiful wall so uh, it's very hard to make sense that uh, why not study Sanskrit really is my question you know people say why should we study it why not is the question so um, here's some idea of the, how we teach the, the grammatical structure so as you can see from the colors here, so Pujaka uh, is in red and the ending for Pujayati is in red also. So uh, Tvam, na Pujayasi, so the Tvam and the Si are both in green. So you understand that uh, Pujaka Hati and Tvam Si, Aham Ami, Aham na Pujayami, Kopi na Pujayati. So you can see by the color scheme how uh, very quick for children to learn this. And of course, they go and they sit on their chairs backwards on their knees and they start praying like a prayer worshiper and uh, they act and the driver and so on. So I'll just play a little bit of this. So on. And then, so once they've done that, then they can go shikshakaha shikshayati, palakaha palayati, tvamna palayasi, ahamna palayami, kopina palayati. Because it's now learned inside, in their heart, it's, they're secure for the rest of their lives. So, and so on, many more examples are there. Then, um, See there how you're learning a lot of grammar without knowing learning grammar. So, ekam palamasti, dve palestaha, trini palani santi. So, very simple to learn your grammar this way. And then you can uh, practice this on, you know, ekam dvaramasti, dve dvarestaha, trini dvarani santi. So, very easy to learn your, uh, because you've learned the song, you can do it, apply it everywhere now. The color yellow is used here because it's Napunza Kalingam. So if it's uh, blue, it will be uh, Punlingam, and if it's pink, it will be a Stri Lingam. So by the color of the page, you'll know which uh, Linga you're dealing with. So you can see there from that song, all seven cases are used. And this is very common that the Visargas are there. Am um, for the second case, Ina for the third case, Aya for the fourth case, At, Panchami Vibhakti, Sya, uh, Shashti Vibhakti, I, 
uh, on the USA. So E for Saptamivi Bhakti and Sambodhanam He Deva E. So once they do have learned the song, they apply the go Bala Asti Balam Pricha Balena Kimpritam Bala Yade Bala Parambara Bala Syanamakim Bale Budilasti He Bala E. And so on. So they can apply it to many other words the Vaidya, the Bhakta, the Vridaha, and the Dutta. And they love the Bhuta, the ghost. So they love going Bhuta Asti. And that there is intelligent the ghost and all those things. They, it's great fun. So they are very enthusiastic to sing these songs. So there are also jokes. So maybe you know the answer to this. The Shikshaka says, Ka Pratama Bharatiya Mahila. Vimanena Videsham Agachat. Would you know the answer to that? Yes. Oh, you do? Okay, yes. does Savita know? Do you know Savita? Okay. It is no? Sita, right? Yes, very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sita. People often, you're very quick to get that. Most people, it takes, uh, yeah, it takes a little while to get that. Yeah. So you, you, so, you gave a hint, that's why I was able to get it. Very good. Okay. So it's also like a joke, it's a very good way of learning a language. So we have uh, in one, in book two, a lot of jokes. Just to learn, uh, you know, little stories are not so hard. Like a long text is a bit scary. So we make the text short, like a joke. So uh, that gives you some idea of, um, I'll stop sharing now. Um, now, so how are we doing? Oh, thank you for sharing this. It was almost like being in your class for a few moments. <laughs> it was, uh, I, I almost, I, I, I uh, how do you say this? It felt like being a part of your uh, lecture or class. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. Good, good. And I also enjoyed and admired the uh, very simple and uh, ingenious way of uh, teaching. And I think you have uh, developed an excellent uh, method and uh, module of uh, making uh, sun Sanskrit learning uh, joyful also. Yes. So, Yes, uh, really very nice. And as uh, Neil said, I was part of your class. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's nice to share this like this so that you almost feel like you're in the class. Yes, yeah, yeah. true. Mm. Very good. Um, and uh, I think uh, we'll move on to the next question. But right. uh, as per the Indian uh, philosophy of karma, the journey towards the ultimate end, what we call as Mukti, is a long one. However, the journey towards Mukti is nothing but a journey towards freedom. How much has Sanskritam as a language and the content available in uh, Sanskrit scriptures helped you in liberating yourself from unnecessary things in uh, life, in day to day life? Yes, yeah, yeah. I like that question very much because uh, there are unnecessary things in one's life that are not much use to you. And so it's good to deal with that. And um, I think it's often called big shaper uh, when uh, people do actions for the sake of it without really much use. It's no use to them. It actually harms us to do those actions. So, uh, I find the way, the path of, of uh, Vedanta is already an opening to freedom. So, uh, you know, walking on this path, you become freer and every moment when that experience is really delightful. And uh, so again, because we have a purpose, we talked about that before. So having a purpose, uh, you have less time to waste your time on unuseful things. So I feel, for example, time has become a precious commodity and I would like to live a purposeful and full life and not waste it on trivial things. And uh, so there's less room for anything that isn't good for me. And that's definitely uh, experience. That's the experience that, uh, you know, I, I would have wasted a lot of time. What people sometimes call killing time, which is an awful expression, really. To kill time so it just means uh, you know how we're going to kill time oh let's play uh, you know a game of cards oh no let's play you know whatever let's just 
just because we don't know how to, uh, that is very sad that the people feel they have to kill time. So I don't have that feeling at all. It's all about use your time as best as you can and enjoy the journey. So I, does that answer your question about um, really, I, uh, you know, how do we liter- liberate ourselves from unnecessary things? Yeah, I think that would be a way to explain it. Yeah. So, Rakar, what is the what's the way forward for you? Do you see yourself as a scholar? Do you see yourself as a sadhaka? How do you see this going forward? 